Benvenuto, welcome to Cherry Hill Home Cooking. My name is Mark. A couple weeks ago, we made a uh, sweet and sour pork, and one of our um, subscribers, I believe it's Bill, um, had uh, sent a comment, and uh, he said that it reminded him of um, the uh, sweet and sour uh, pork that um, he had at school lunches in the 1960s, uh, and then he loved it. Um, now, I didn't. I was not in school in the 1960s, so Bill, you're a little older than I am. But um, he asked if um, we make, uh, if I make a, a chicken chow mein, and I haven't made this in years. Uh, so anyway, that's what we're going to make today is chicken chow mein for Bill. I haven't made this in years, but it was something my grandmother loved, and I used to make it quite frequently for her, my Irish grandmother. Um, a couple little techniques. This seems to be a basic recipe. Almost every recipe um, that I looked out there uh, online for for chicken chow mein was just about the same with a couple little uh, tweaks here and there. I've tweaked this um, over the years, so I'm going to show you the way that I make it. All right, so this is one of those recipes, and of course with all this stuff in front of me, it looks like there's a lot of components, and there are, um, but once everything is chopped and, you know, the, the cooking part of it goes really fast. So I just wanted to show you a few things. Um, all right. So um, before I go over the chicken, because I don't want to get my hands all dirty. Um, now, one thing, Bill, I don't think in school, and they, I could be wrong, but I don't think they actually added um, chow mein noodles. Um, probably, and you can still get it today in the Le Choy, uh, in the um, Asian section of uh, most uh, supermarkets, uh, a jar of Le, Le Choy um, chicken chow mein, with, uh, and it's got the crunchy noodles on it. Oh, which I forgot those, but we'll bring those out a little later. Um, and then they have served it over rice. We are going to have it over rice tonight too, but we're also going to have it with um, chow mein noodles. So, first thing you want to do is you want to, uh, you're going to need about a pound of um, uh, chow mein noodles. These happen to be the stir fry ones. I don't think it really makes that much difference, uh, but they're a little bit thinner. I like the thinner ones. Anyway, you want to cook that uh, according to package directions on the back. All right, I think it's um, two cups of water uh, per package, and uh, they, they cook really fast, j just a three-minute cook time. Uh, then you want to rinse them uh, with uh, cold water, uh, because we don't want all that starch in them. Um, all right, so the next thing I went before um, we uh, leave you guys, um, I wanted to go over the rest of the ingredients. So, now most um, chicken chow mein um, recipes that I found either call for cabbage or um, bean sprouts. We're going to use both. So you're going to need about two cups of shredded cabbage. This happens to be Savoy cabbage because it was the smallest one. They didn't have a smaller head of cabbage, but I've already done that. So you just want to slice that pretty thin. All right. I don't know if you can see that, but they are very thinly sliced. All right. I'm done with that. I don't need any more of that. Um, and then we want um, some green onion and you want the whole uh, tops and the dark green and the white. And that's pretty easy. You're just going to slice it into little pieces. You don't have to be that particular. All right. And we already got those there. And then um, for this recipe, you only need two stalks of celery. Um, but the one thing you do want to do is slice your cel celery relatively thin. All right. So as thin as you can get it. All right. Just because that's going to take that, that the celery is probably going to be the longest to cook and you have a really short cook time for this. Um, but of course, like in a lot of um, Asian kind of stir fry type um, veggies, you want everything still a little bit crisp. Okay, I'm done with that. So I'm going to put this aside. All right. And then um, you're going to need about two cups of shredded carrots. No, I did not shred these myself. I spent a little extra money and bought the shredded ones. All right, and then there's our bean sprouts. I got about a cup of bean sprouts. Um, like I said, that just gives it that little bit of um, crunch and, and bean sprouts have that kind of earthy, earthy taste to them. All right, I, that's the only way I can think of describing it. All right, so in this bowl, I've got about um, just slightly little over a pound of, um, I got uh, chicken tenders. You can get a, a you know pound of a, um, boneless, skinless uh, chicken breast and, and cut it up. Um, we need a little, just a little pinch of salt. All right. And I'm going to use a little bit of um, accent or MSG. You don't need to. You can admit that if for whatever reason 
you don't like that. And then you need two tablespoons of cornstarch. And I'm not going to get any on the counter. Yay! Put that safely over there. All right, so then as far as our chicken, all right, so that's the chicken tender. And I just took it and cut it into bite-sized pieces. You can make them as small as you want or as big as you want, of course. If you make them smaller, then it's going to kind of distribute through your noodles really well. And you get a piece of um, chicken in every bite. Anything done with that. All right, now, of course, with almost every Asian recipe, um, the sauce is always key, right? Um, and for the sauce for this, we need some soy sauce. You need some oyster sauce and some sesame seed oil. Now, I had the I had soy sauce and sesame so seed oil. I didn't have soy so uh, oyster sauce on hand, although we do use it in a few other things, but I did have to get that. Um, my, that point being is that you know, most households have soy, so soy sauce in, um, in their cabinet and possibly even um, sesame oil. All right, so then, so this is my sauce. I've made it. Now, the one thing, and I'll put in the comment, I do double the sauce. Um, it usually calls for two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of um, oyster sauce, and one tablespoon of um, the sesame seed oil. I double it because I like it to be saucy. All right, so I'm going to just toss these a bit. Get everything nicely coated. And, of course, I, I got some rice out. We're, we are going to have some rice with this. Oh, oh, and also, you need a couple uh, big cloves of shredded garlic. I did it in my little handy-dandy machine. You can do it by hand, but I hate to cut garlic by hand. Um, all right, and then you want to put a couple tablespoons of your um, sauce that's going to go in with the rest of the recipe. Give it a little stir. Yeah, I didn't get that on the counter, but I did the sauce. All right, and then just toss that. All right, it'll kind of start to get a little bit sticky, and that's what you want. All right, and we're just going to let that marinate for just a short amount of time. You, while you're preparing the rest of your stuff, you're going to allow it to marinate. Okay, I'm going to clean up this mess, get some heat sauces out, and we'll start to cook. See you in a bit. All right, guys, so I've got my noodles done. I cooked my noodles uh, according to the package direction, rinsed them. You want to rinse them for two reasons, uh, where you would never rinse um, Italian pasta or make an Italian dish. But this, we don't necessarily want all the starch. Plus, the other thing is we want to cool it down to stop the cooking process. Okay, so that's all done. So now, normally you would do this in a big skillet. Um, if you had a wok, that would wok too. <laughs> Wait, made a funny face. <laughs> um, now, in interest of, I don't know if any of you remember, years ago on Saturday Night Live, um, was it, who did the impression of uh, Julia Child? No. Uh, I don't think it was Dan, was it? It was, um, was it Dan Aykroyd or, no. anyway, the they did a funny impression of her uh, cooking and, you know, things were flying all over the place. She was caught chopping off her fingers and stuff. But in any event, I decided to use uh, a Dutch oven because uh, it'll make it a little bit um, easier to mix everything together. But if you're at home and no one is standing in front of you uh, with a camera, go ahead and do it in a frying pan. All right, so I've got my uh, wok on medium. My wok. My uh, pan here on medium. And this is a new, brandy new bottle of vegetable oil. Of course, I can't open. Let's see. What type of poking device will work best? That worked good. Um, oh, and the other thing is, I, I mentioned shortly the uh, Le Choy uh, deep fried chow mein noodles. We're going to sprinkle those on the top. But again, Bill, I think in school they probably did, uh, um, you know, the, the, the sauce and the chicken and the veggies. And then they may have done the the chow mein noodles as well. Uh, but And then they sprinkled that on top of it. So just in case you're thinking, hmm, that's not the way I remember it. That's probably how they did it. All right. So we've got our pan heating up. Um, and we're going to need, we want to coat it pretty well. We actually need, we're going to need another fourth of a cup of this to kind of 
get our veggies crispy. All right, so the main thing here is we want to get our chicken in. Toss it around a bit, and we want to cook it. Uh, these are like, you know, one of the reasons you cut them up in the bite-sized pieces, of course, too, is that they will cook relatively fast. And we're not looking to really get any color, but if you get a little color on there, that's fine. You want to get them cooked, so, and that's going to probably take a good three minutes. Three, four. Ooh, it smells delicious. Uh, after we get that cooked, we're going to transfer it to a plate because our vegetables go in next. Oh, one thing I may not have mentioned is when you make your sauce, um, you want to you want to um, mix it up really good. I had that other bowl and it was too shallow, but um, you want to see you don't want the you want the oil to clump in little bubbles on the top, not just a big bubble, one big bubble. So either give it a good whisk or a good brisk stir. Um, when we made the uh, the sweet and sour pork, sorry, and I can't remember your name, but somebody had, uh, you know, had made a comment and that they enjoyed uh, watching it, um, and they asked us, uh, um, the, uh, she said uh, she wished we had uh, made the rice. Um, we definitely can make some rice. Um, like, uh, rice is one of those things I think people, if you don't uh, cook it at home, you're always afraid, you, you know, it's not going to be done enough or... Um, it just takes a little mastering of it, but certainly we'd be more than happy to make a batch of rice or um, next recipe we uh, use rice in, we'll make it along with the recipe. Oh, it's just going to take about another minute. Got a little bit of font on the bottom there. Of course, this has been, we did the um, cornstarch, so. All right, I'm going to let that cook for another minute. And we'll be back so you don't have to watch us cooking chicken. All right, guys, our chicken is all cooked through. We're going to remove that to a plate. I turned my heat sauce off just because I don't want all that nice brown font, which is also going to help thicken up our sauce to burn on me. So, that's good. All right, I'm going to turn the heat back on, and we're going to add one fourth cup of vegetable oil. I know that's a dry measuring cup, but I accounted for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let that just heat up quickly. And it's bubbling. All right, so we got, uh, then basically we're just going to add all the rest of our vegetables in. Throw some on the counter. Thank you, honey. You're so nice to me. <laughs> then we'll throw in our celery and scallions. And you want to give that a nice toss around. And now you want to cook this till everything just starts to get a little, little bit brown. Okay, and that's going to probably, of course, this um, cabbage is going to really limping up, and um, we just want to see a little bit of color, all right? And that's going to take about eight minutes, so. And you want to keep a close eye on it. Don't walk away and uh, start vacuuming or uh, playing the lottery, because um, it'll burn quickly. So, all right, we'll see you in a little bit. Oop, actually, I'm going to add my garlic, too. Sorry, got that.
Now it's going to start to smell delicious. All right, now we'll see you in about eight minutes. And when you come back, there'll be no carrots on the counter. Or when we come back. <laughs> All right, guys, our veggies have cooked down, gotten softened. I'm going to add our chicken back in. Give that a stir around. I'm gonna add a little bit of my sauce. Get any of our nice brown bits up from the bottom. Get in there. And start to incorporate everything. Add a little bit more sauce. I wouldn't dump all of this in. Like I said, I did a double. I, we like it a little saucier, but we'll go about that. We can always add some more in if we want it. See, there's no, um, there's no carrots on the counter, but there is noodles now. <laughs> All right, guys. So, you get the idea. You're going to incorporate that get your noodles coated in your sauce and then we're just about ready to eat we'll be back in a little while with dinner well it's finally dinner time <laughs> we got our chicken chow mein we got some crunchy noodles fried noodles put on top if you like I'll try a few. Oh, cool. I should gotta try at least a couple. I don't. I, mm. It's been a long, long time since I've made this. It smells delicious. Mm. It's gonna be good. I don't think I've ever made it. It looks either. delicious. Yeah. Yeah. It smells delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, it will be. Here, right, here it goes. Mmm. Oh, that is good. That's mm. delicious. Mm. And mm. I like how even all through the noodles, just even in the pasta, I can, uh, mm. I can taste all the veggies and. Not the pasta, the noodles. I yep. yelled at him for calling it spaghetti oh. or, or something, but mm. <laughs> okay. Just getting corrected. Mm. Mm. That is really mm. good. That's the right part. Mm. And that's so we got our rice. Mm. You don't have to have rice with it. Like I said, if you're using the kind of jarred one, definitely there's a lot more sauce in that and the rice would absorb it. But mm. that is really good. Mm. Mm. But I love rice. Mm. All right, well, I hope. You've enjoyed making dinner with us tonight. Um, oh, I don't know if any of you noticed all that stuff on the counter in the back. Probably not on the, on the other counter, huh? Oh, that's the table. Um, of course, mm. next week is our Halloween uh, party. So we'll get ready for that. Um, I'm going to make crabbies. A lot of the um, platters and stuff out there I'm going to use, but. That's what that mess is back there. This mm -hmm. I'm going to make uh, crabbies or mm. what else are they called? Um, crab puffs. Mm, yeah. 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 Anyway. Mm. All right. Well, again, I hope you've enjoyed uh, making dinner with us. I hope you tried this recipe. I know it looks like there's a lot of um, components to it, but really, mm. once you get everything caught up, and it goes right along. Anyway, hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you for having supper with us. Please remember to like and subscribe. Check out cherryhillhomecooker.com and we'll see you on our next video. Ciao! Bye! Mmm. Um, yeah, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. I think you've never, mm. never made this before. Mm. I mean, before. <laughs>